Hello. Going to wait for 20 people to be viewing before I get started. Dum dee dum. Okay, I'm just gonna get started. Oh, actually, it's. Oh wait. Oh wait. One more minute and get started. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for being on time. Um, so today we're going to be continuing our discussion of angular momentum. But I wanted to just go ahead and review what we did last time. Last time. Um, so I introduced the concept of angular momentum. Um, which is denoted by L. And angular momentum is basically the amount of spinning. Some definition of the amount of spinning. Um, there are there's really only angular momentum, but it's useful to think of two different types of angular momentum. Uh, so one of the types of angular momentum is called orbital angular momentum, and it has to do with something moving as a whole in a circle. Okay, so this is orbital angular momentum. So it's, it's rotating as a whole, okay? around a central point. Um, the formula for orbital angular momentum is the mass of the object times its speed times the radius of the circle that it's moving in. Okay? Um, and then there's a second kind of angular momentum which is called spin angular momentum and um, spin angular momentum is something that is not moving as a whole but is rotating about an axis in place like that and the formula for spin angular momentum is I times omega where I is the rotational inertia and omega is the angular velocity so, um, if you have a single object, the total angular momentum of a single object is going to be equal to the sum Did I get 300 subs? I I thought I was at 300 subs before 
vacation, but then I came back and I was at 299. And then, um, yeah. So I don't know what happened. Maybe someone else subscribed. The um, total angular momentum of a single object is the sum of its spin angular momentum and its orbital angular mo momentum. Okay. Um, if you have more than one object in the system, then the total angular momentum of the system is the sum of the individual angular momenta of its components. Okay. Um, and then we went on to talk about why is angular momentum useful. And the reason is because if there is no torque on the system, then the initial angular momentum is equal to the final angular momentum. And that makes it really useful to solve problems. Okay? <coughs> so basically for the remainder of our lesson today, I'm going to do examples. And I don't really feel like plugging numbers into my calculator, so we're just going to sort of talk abstractly about these examples, okay? Um, so let's suppose that we have a disk. We have a solid disk orbiting a central point. Um, solid disks have an inertia given by one half m r squared, where r is the radius of the disk. Okay, um, one million soon. Yeah, right. Uh, so let's draw a picture of this system. Okay, so we've got a disk. And the disk has a radius that is little r, okay? And that disk is moving in a, in a circle, okay, around a central point, and the radius of that circle is big R. So there are two different radii. There's the radius of the disk itself and the radius of the circle that the disk is moving in. So little r and big R. Um, it takes a time t to complete a revolution. Okay? And the disk is also rotating with an angular velocity of omega. And so what I would like to do is I would like to figure out what is the um, total angular momentum of this disk. Now because the disk is orbiting and it's spinning while it's orbiting, it's going to have orbital angular momentum and it's going to have spin angular momentum. Okay, so orbital angular momentum is mvr, and spin angular momentum is i omega. All right, now it is um, uh, <clears throat> it is uh, given that the inertia of the solid disk is one half mr squared. So I can go down to the next line and I can replace inertia with one half mr squared. Okay. Um, and then for the velocity, 
of the orbit, it's moving in a circle. So I can go back to our discussion of circular motion where we learned that speed, if you're in a circle, moving in a circle, is 2 pi r over the period. It's distance traveled divided by time it takes. So the distance traveled is the circumference of the circle, and the time it takes is one period. So I have um, 2 pi r over the period. And notice how I have, again, two different types of radii. I have the radius of the disk itself, and I have the radius of the orbit, which appears here and here. Okay? So that's basically the total angular momentum of this disk. So I wanted to do an example of showing how that works. Okay. Um, the next example I want to do is a, a figure skater. All right, so um, if you're like me, you enjoy watching um, figure skating every four years in the Winter Olympics. Um, it's mildly amusing. And uh, one of the things a figure skater will do is they will go into a spin. So you have a figure skater, and when they start their spin, usually they have their leg out and their arm out, like this kind of. And so they're doing a spin. All right? And then while they're doing their spin, they'll pull their arms in, they'll go. It's very dramatic, okay? So after a while, they will pull their leg in and their arm in, and they'll do something that looks like this may be um, okay they'll go into that pose and when they do that they start spinning faster okay maybe I'll put two three they spin way faster once they do that so the question is why and it has to do with um, angular momentum conservation. Okay. Um, so this figure skater is spinning, so I'm going to use the formula for spin angular momentum, which is I times omega. And then I'm going to look more closely at the definition of inertia. Inertia is sum of m r squared. Okay. Um, excuse me. Inertia is sum of m r squared. So, um, what happens when the figure skater pulls their arms in is they're reducing, and r represents the distance from the axis of rotation. So they're pulling in mass, they're reducing r. And so because they're reducing r, that's going to reduce the inertia. Okay, so the inertia goes down. But the angular momentum has to stay constant. So inertia and rotation has to multiply to a constant. So when they pull their arms in, the inertia goes down. But to keep the total amount of angular momentum constant, the spin rate has to go up, so they spin faster. So that is why when the figure skater pulls in their arms and legs, they spin faster, okay? Uh, believe it or not, this actually has an application in uh, astrophysics. If we think about a star, stars are rotating. Now what determines the size of a star is um, gravity is trying to shrink the star down and then in the center of the star you have um, you know a nuclear fusion happening which is basically an explosion 
So a star is essentially an explosion that is being held in place by gravity. It's not allowed to expand because of the gravity of the star. All right. Now, at the end of a star's life, um, the star runs out of fuel in its core. And so as a result, there's no more explosion in the center. And so gravity takes over and it shrinks the star. And as it shrinks the star, the inertia of the star decreases. But because the angular momentum of the star is constant, its spin rate goes up. And so um, when a star dies, and there's a, a number of different end states of a star, it could turn into a neutron star or a black hole or a white dwarf. But all of those, because they're so small, they because they shrink down, they tend to be spinning very fast, okay? Because of conservation of angular momentum. Uh, let's do another example. This is an example of stacked disks. And I'll put in parentheses, making a pizza. Um, so let's say you're making a pizza. Making a pizza. Um, and so you've got the dough. And so this is kind of a 3D view. So the dough, uh, we're not viewing the dough from the top, so it looks like a perfect circle. We're kind of viewing it from edge on, so it looks like an oval, like that. Okay. Um, and the dough is spinning. Because that's what you do with pizza dough to make it have its characteristic shape. Um, and so the the dough is spinning. It has its own rotation rate of omega 1. And then it has its own inertia, I1. OK. And uh, let's suppose you're making a pepperoni pizza. So you're going to drop a pepperoni onto the very center of the pizza. OK. The, the pepperoni has a different spin rate. So it has a spin rate of omega 2. And it has a different inertia because it's a different size and it's a different mass from the dough. OK. And you drop that pizza, or that um, pepperoni, onto the pizza. So now you have something like this, with the pepperoni in the very center. And it's spinning. And we would like to know, what is the final spin rate of the... Um, pizza after that. So what is omega final? And so to do that, we're going to use angular momentum conservation. So the initial angular momentum is going to be equal to the final angular momentum. Um, now these are two spinning objects. These are not orbiting objects. They're spinning objects. So I'm going to use I omega. Um, so we have the... Um, and so I'm going to use the fact that if you have a system the total angular momentum of the system is the sum of the individual parts. So my initial angular momentum is going to be I1 omega 1 plus I2 omega 2. All right. Um, and while you're doing this calculation, you, you want to definitely worry about the sign. of omega, because omega is positive if it's counterclockwise, negative if it's clockwise, okay? Um, so each of these could be positive or negative. Um, omega, and then once the pepperoni lands on the pizza, they're going to be spinning together, so they become a single object. So what we do with the inertia is we now add the two inertias because they've combined to become a single object. 
So kind of like a completely inelastic collision. When two things collide and stick together, they, um, they act like a single body. Okay? So that is going to be the final angular momentum. So we could use this equation and solve for omega fine. All right? So conservation of angular momentum allows us to solve for the final spin rate. Um, all right. So let's do another example. And this example is hopping on a merry-go-round. Okay, so we're going to look at a top view of this merry-go-round. Um, the merry-go-round looks like this. Um, it has a radius, which I will denote by big R. It has an inertia I, and it is spinning at some rate omega. Okay, um, and you are standing not on the merry-go-round, but you are at rest, just standing on that, just outside the edge of the merry-go-round. So you are stationary. Okay, um, because you are stationary, you have no angular momentum. The merry-go-round does have angular momentum, okay? Um, and that angular momentum, because the merry-go-round is spinning, is given by I omega. So the initial angular momentum is just I omega, just the angular momentum of the merry-go-round. Then what you do is you step on the merry-go-round. Okay, so now you're on the merry-go-round and um, as a result of that you're on the very outside edge, so you're a distance r away from the center of the merry-go-round. Okay, um, and as a result of that, the merry-go-round is going to slow down. It's not going to be spinning as fast anymore. And so we want to figure out what is omega final. Um, now here's the thing. Uh, so you in the merry-go-round, because you have stepped onto the merry-go-round, you're now essentially one object, okay? So just like before, just like with the, the star shrank, or the, um, the star that shrank, its inertia goes down, okay? And the reason the inertia went down is because um, uh, the radius decreased. But now, we, we don't have anything changing shape, but what we do have is that mass is being added, okay? So we're going to have a new inertia, which includes the inertia of the merry-go-round originally and the inertia that's added because of the person stepping on it, okay? Um, now you might recall that the formula for inertia is sum over mr squared, okay? So what that means, and by the way, the person has a mass m. So what that means is that the new inertia is going to be the old inertia of just the merry-go-round plus m r squared. So this is the inertia of the merry-go-round, and this is the inertia of the person who hopped onto the merry-go-round. Okay? Um, so the inertia increase.
sending me messages the entire time I've been teaching, but um, but I uh, I just got a huge block of messages all at once. So um, I don't know what the deal is. So I, I just have a little bit left in this lesson. If if you are not understanding me um, because of the quality of the of the stream, then um, go ahead and uh, watch the period four version of the lesson where we didn't have this issue. Okay. Um, so. I'm going to go back to um, this example. So the, the person is running towards the merry-go-round, and then they hop on the merry-go-round. So now they hop on the merry-go-round, and the merry-go-round starts to spin. And we want to know what is the final angular velocity of that. Um, so, if we think about our initial angular momentum, there is no angular momentum from the merry-go-round itself. It's only from this person who is running. They're not spinning, they're orbiting the merry-go-round. So my initial angular momentum is mvr. Okay, so this is the orbital angular momentum of the person. Okay, um, the final angular momentum is, again, the angular momentum of the person and the merry-go-round combined. So that's going to be the same formula as I had right here. So my final angular momentum is going to be I plus MR squared. So merry-go-round plus person times omega final. All right, so then I would set these two equal to each other. MVR equals I plus MR squared times omega final. And I could solve for omega final. So I have one more thing. It looks like my connection is just completely horrible right now. So I'm just going to write down the equation. Um, and the question is, how does torque change angular momentum. Um, and so there's an equation um, and it says that the net torque is equal to the rate of change of angular momentum. Okay. So that's a useful formula. It tells you how torque changes the angular momentum.